Settle down. Good morning, people. Can I say rolfers? Are you here this morning? Can I hear all the rolfers? Hey, come on. All right. Is there anybody here visiting for the first time? Can you raise your hand? We want to see you. We want to just welcome you. Anybody first timers? Right there. Thank you, sir. Thank you for visiting. You're welcome to here. All right. Anybody else? All right. So, okay. Now it's giving time. All right. How many of you know that giving to the Lord is part of your worship? More than singing, more than jumping around, more than clapping your hands. It's get reaching down to your pocket and giving it to the Lord. That's part of your worship. So we're going to have the declaration. If we can have it ready. Okay, let's all stand up. You know, this declaration, we've been reciting this every single Sunday, most of the Sundays. And we've got testimonies like people receiving checks, people receiving surprise presents, and it's true. So when you recite it this morning, is it ready? And when you recite this this morning, do it with conviction and believe what you're declaring, okay? So as we give today's tithes and offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and bonuses, benefit sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, Checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. For our God shall supply all of our needs. According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Go to the front and give your offering and tithes to the Lord. You know, we also have online giving. If you didn't bring your cash or you didn't bring your check, we have online giving. We have cash up. If we can flash the, the code for our cash up. Give your first to the Lord. For he is worthy and he is good. While we're giving, pop online, press on prayer. We have online press on prayer during the week. So um, connect with the Facebook page of River of Life. We also have press on prayer every Saturday morning at what time? At what time? At what time? At what time? All right, so next Saturday, we won't have it because we have Encounter uh, God Retreat. But the next Saturday, you better be here and experience the presence of God during the prayer at 6 a.m. We also have Press on Prayer every Sunday at 10 a.m. Our service starts at 10.30. So if you want to join us during prayer, come 30 minutes early, okay? All right, so let us pray for the offering this morning. Uh, Rachel, can you please pray for the offering this morning? Okay. <laughs> uh, if you could all extend oh, all, all your arms. Thank you, Lord, for you are a generous God. And I thank you, Lord, that you are our ultimate provider. And so as we are sowing our seeds, Lord God, I know that there will be, uh, it will come into fruition, prosperity, abundance, overflowing, that our cup runs over, Father. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you do the opposite of what the world tells us to do. Lord God, that as we keep giving, we will just keep receiving. And so we receive that in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Rachel. So next weekend, starting Friday at 7 p.m., we're going to have our Encounter God Retreat or EGR. Okay, how many of you are participating during that weekend? How many of you are engaged in EGR? Can I see your hands? Come on. 
EGR. And if you're not, it's not too late to register. At the end of the service, Brianna, Brianna, are you here? She's already outside. She, oh, Brianna, can you just raise your hand? If you want to register and be involved with the Encounter God Retreat, it's an awesome experience. I highly recommend it. You don't want to miss it in your entire life. Just see Brianna so you can register, okay? Um, also, the serve team of EGR, come on, give your, yourself a pat. We had an awesome meeting this morning. We are preparing for this weekend, for the next, I mean, for the next weekend. We are praying for you. We are fasting for you. We are ready to see the move of God in your life. So, um, serve team, great job this morning. Um, with that. We want to call on some testimonies. If you have a testimony uh, during your Encounter God retreat uh, experience, uh, I need maybe two or three people. I know that Marlene wants to testify what God has done uh, to her during the EGR. If you can come up here, Marlene. Also, anybody else want to testify on uh, your experience with EGR? Just come to the front while Marlene is giving her testimony. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Marlene. Um, I've been coming to the church for about four years. Um, so I'm going to say my testimony is a little bit lengthy, but bear with me. <laughs> so EGR Batch 42 was my first EGR. This was the first time that I had truly experienced a real encounter with God. It was so unique, and it truly changed my life. The reason why I've decided to finally share my testimony is because I want to encourage each of you to come with an open heart, ready to receive and prepare with a true encounter with the Holy Spirit. One of the reasons why I was looking forward to going to EGR is because I was going through a financial situation. I felt stuck in my career and my eldest son was truly struggling with some habits that I wanted him to try and break so that he can be healed of one of these things. On the second day of my EGR, I heard God speak to me during a session of worship. What God asked me to do was at the moment the most heartbreaking thing. I asked him, why do you want me to do this? Why, why do you want me to leave knowing I would hurt this person? I also asked him, why would you want me to hurt the person that introduced me to your kingdom? Some of you might be wondering why I was asking so many questions. And the reason why is because I never knew who God was. And I, at the time, didn't know his voice. That same day, during another worship session, God answered all of my questions. In his answer, he told me that he needed me to leave the homosexual relationship that I was in. After he spoke to me, I still had questions and I was scared because I didn't know how I would, I didn't know who would help me financially, how I was going to make it being a single mom with two kids, how I was going to be able to pay for my car, groceries, rent, and all the other things that life requires us to pay. After that EGR ended, I felt like I needed to get connected somewhere. Shortly after that, my friend, now small group leader, Brandon, invited me to his group. In his group, I have learned so much and grown beyond what I've ever expected. I also connected well with Dr. Latrice and learned so much from her. During this process, no one had really knew what God had asked me to do until I finally decided to open up to a few people God can show me I can trust. These people have helped me so much and truly encouraged me to see God and run to him in the darkest of my times. While going through this process, even in in my time of holding off and doing what God asked of me, he opened up so many doors for myself and my kids. I had been trying to join the nursing program but had been rejected by two schools. But suddenly, by God's grace, a door opened for me to have an opportunity to get my degree in nursing. I was now working a full-time job, going to school full-time and trying to stay connected in church and with my small group every single week. A few months went by and I suddenly lost my job. It was a complete shock, but for some reason, I was filled with so much peace. EGR Batch 43 came around and I clearly heard God say to me during our Emmanuel moment that he would provide time for me to rest. 
and not just rest, but to rest in him. I didn't know where my money was going to come from, how I was going to pay my bills, but he gave me the word rest, and that's exactly what I did. I focused on school and focused on truly seeking him every moment that I could ever, that I could now that I have, that now that I have more free time. <clears throat> I still hadn't done what he originally asked for me to do back in my first CGR, but something to, took place that gave me the boldness and confidence to know that it was my time to leave the relationship he had called me out of. This was not easy because I had nowhere to go. I only had enough money to rent a, a hotel room for two weeks, but because of my obedience and listening to his voice, God's provision and blessings fell upon me faster than I could ever imagine. Brandon and his mom opened up their home and kitchen to me so that I can do a plate sale. I had a few people bless me with money that I was definitely not expecting. Although I was seeing all these blessings take place, I was still nervous because I knew that I had a car payment, a school payment, and we didn't know where we were going to live after our money ran out. In that moment, God's goodness still overflowed. In my last week of staying in the hotel, I received a phone call from my school. I was terrified to answer because I knew I was, on the, I was late on the previous payment and I figured out that they were going to kick me out. But again, God's goodness prevailed. The director of my school said that someone else was on the line and when I heard the person voice, I realized that it was someone here from Rolf. They know who they are, and this person called me and my school and paid off the last three and a half months of school that I needed to pay. And it was not cheap. <laughs> During this time, <clears throat> I had also gone to an appointment for a Christian housing program and applied for their housing. They told me it would take time for them to know if my kids and I would be eligible for housing. But again, God's worked so fast that I was not only accepted, but they took me in the next week on my last day of staying in the hotel. So this organization placed me and my kids in an apartment that is fully furnished, light and water paid, internet included, and only two seventy-five per month. <laughs> this. So in case you all want to know, this group helps out single moms and gives them opportunity to stay focused on their school. So right now, I have thankfully finished my last semester of nursing school. I passed all of my classes, and now I'm preparing for NCLEX. So, so, so in Exodus 3.14, God says, I am who I am, and he is everything his word calls him to be. His promises are true and are always yes and amen. In the process of searching for God, I have experienced him to be Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Rapha. He is truly a God that provides in all of my needs. And he has been a God that has not only physically healed me, but has healed me from my emotional pain as well. He has truly delivered me from so much of my trauma. I now know that I am not a victim to my circumstances, but I am living in victory because of what Christ did for you and me. So I encourage each of you to come to EGR with an open heart. There are times we want to build a wall because of all, because of all the people that have hurt us. And I know because I did that once too. But I share all of this with you so that you can know that God is ready to completely transform you and take you into new heights. There may be times that he calls us to do uncomfortable or difficult things, but when we are obedient and willing to trust him through the process, you will see his goodness fall upon your life like I have. Wow. Thank you, Marlene, for that great testimony. You know, if you've never heard God's voice, his voice is real. Marlene did not know the Lord, and yet when she allowed herself, when she placed herself in a position where it's like, okay, Lord, reveal to me who you are, and God did and spoke to her. And one good thing about that is when God gave her instructions, she didn't have to figure out the rest. She didn't have to figure out what's going to happen. Do I do this? Do I... God takes care of the rest, just obeying his word. Amen. So, all right. So, I'm going to call on Ryan, come here. And I'm also going to call on the kids, children, come to the front. The, the middle schoolers and the high schoolers will stay. 
in the sanctuary today. But we're going to release you kids. Just stand right here. But we're going to call on Ryan right now. And I'm going to call on the worship team and those people that have, you know, connection with Ryan. If uh, Pastor Kelly and Pastor Elmer are, are here. Come on. Family. If you consider him family, friend. I'm calling him because if you don't know, this is Ryan's last Sunday here. He's going to the Philippines to do mission work. Now I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's going to Maine to finish his dental study. So after how many years, Ryan? Four? After four years, he's going to come back here. So if you have dental problems, go look for Ryan. Okay? So, <laughs> yes, Dr. Ryan Matthew is Gera. Ryan, we love you. My heart hurts. If I could just pray that you just stay here, I would. But I know that God has big plan for you in Maine and in your dental school. So we're going to release you a blessing when you go there. But I just want to take this opportunity as your uh, worship pastor and as, a, as your tita. Tita is like aunt. She, he's, he's my son. He's one of my sons. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to imagine life not seeing you. I know that you're going to be in Maine and yeah. But we're just going to obey the Lord and let him do his thing on you in Maine. Okay. We'll all move to Maine and uh, start River of Life Fellowship there. As you all know, Ryan has been so faithful uh, playing the drums uh, every, almost every Sunday morning. And he's very faithful. So if you are interested, if you play the drums, please see me or Isaac or Caleb after the service. But... I also want to say this, if you've been blessed uh, by Ryan's life and his faithfulness, give him money. He needs money. He's got, his cash up is Ryan Matthew Esguera. Okay? So um, don't, don't be stingy uh, releasing the blessing. So we're going to ask Pastor Bobby to release one of our sons. Lord, we, come on, let's send your hand. Lord, he's a son of the house, um, one of the sons of the house. We thank you, Lord. We release him. Thank you for, Ryan, for your faithfulness. Thank you for a little young, he's been, been brought in this church and served this church faithfully. I declare the blessing of the Lord. Be protected. I thank you, Lord, uh, that you will protect him. And I pray that you connect him in the right church and right people and a people that will mentor him. And he will disciple people there. Father God, that I prophesy that you will not be going down, but you're going to go up in the name of the name of Jesus. That you, your fire will not keep on burning. That your fire will keep on burning and burning in the name of Jesus. No time for lukewarmness, but a time to be going in the kingdom of the Lord. I declare, Father God, for great friends in Jesus' name. Bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay. All right, Ryan. Okay, for the last time, can you release the kids to their classroom? Yeah. All right. Uh, Father God, I pray for the kids that you just uh, love on them, help them learn in class today and have fun. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Are you ready for the word this morning? Are you ready to hear the heart of God this morning? Pastor Bobby is going to preach the word, but um, this week has been extra challenging for him. Um, I've never seen him bothered uh, all my life, all our married life, except this week. Um, I, I felt uh, there was like an anxiety trying to uh, get into him. He's been hurting um, his fingers and his foot. And uh, remember last Sunday, he was testifying that his uh, foot pain was gone. But then right after service, it went back. <laughs> so he went, go see a physical therapist, a chiropractor. He went to get new shoes and new slippers uh, as recommended by the doctor. Um, I just speak 
the, the word, the Psalm 103 to you, Pastor Bob, this morning. Um, as you are uh, released the word of God this morning, you are healed. And pain never coming back in the name of Jesus. So um, can we all extend our hands to Pastor Bob? We all agree that he is completely healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. So good to be um, prayed for and also have a wife, uh, you know, to uh, be with you and everything. So, ah, okay. <laughs> How do I start this one? Because this word, I need this word. I, uh, it's going to minister to me and hopefully it will minister to you. If you're suffering for any physical ailment, just raise your hand. Anybody? Just, come on, just let's just be real. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your help. Let's just raise your hands. Continue to raise your hands. God, you are the great healer. We need you. We need you. God, thank you. Whatever form you want to heal us, heal us, Father God. In a form of instantaneous healing, let it be. Or gradual healing, let it be. Whatever you want, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we declare healing. Come. I bind the spirit of iniquity and or any form of infirmities. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Any form of diseases, I come against you. I pray that this church will be disease-free in Jesus' name. Lord, we will speak your word. We thank you, Father God. Any back pain in the name of Jesus, any form of arthritis, I come against you in Jesus' name. Any, any, any uh, a woman problem in the name of Jesus, I declare be healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, what you're about to do in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Who's ready to hear the word of God this morning? Come on. Who is ready to hear God's word? I am ready. I'm ready to hear the word of God. So, I'm, last Sunday, who was here last Sunday? Who is? Well, who are not here last Sunday? Okay. So after I know I'll give you a little preview of I'm going to be talking. I'm going to continue what I've been speaking about. And it was in John 5, verse 1 to 9. Okay. And this is a story about Jesus encounter a 30 years, years of being paralyzed. A man who we was paralyzed for 38 years encountered the Lord. Imagine for 38 years, this, pa uh, this patient has been paralyzed. It's on the floor for 38 years. I don't know about your sickness or your disease or whatever situation. Is it more than 38 years? Maybe not. Maybe more. So this is a story about this person. And to give you a little summary of this, John, if you want to be lifted up, if you want to really know about the book of John, it's a, it's, it, John is a book of miracles. There's a record of seven miracles that happen in, in, in the book of John. And powerful miracles. There's not only ordinary miracles. These are miracles like raising Lazarus from death. That's really powerful. Amen. There's also the first miracle of Jesus Christ where turning the water into wine. Turning water into wine. So another one is that there's so much miracles. There's also the miracle of feeding 5,000. After this chapter, chapter 5 is a miracle of this paralyzed man. A powerful testimony. So verse 5 says that there is a festival that's happening in, in, in Jerusalem. In the Israelite people. And you know if you are Israelites, you go and celebrate with that celebration, okay? They didn't mention what kind of celebration it is, but they said probably a Passover, uh, a Passover or, or all these different um, uh, feasts that they are doing. So, so Jesus is going to that place. And in that place, there is a, near Jerusalem, there is a pool. Anybody has a pool here? Pool, pool. Who loves to have pool? Oh my God, you don't need to. <laughs> Uh, swimming pool, yeah. Swimming, not the pool. Pool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we have a pool. We have the pool for almost, uh, how many years, babe? 15 years. 15 years. We counted, maybe we, we dip on that pool probably 12 times. <laughs> we, I pay $150 every month. 
to maintain that pool. I'm paying a lot of stuff to maintain the pool. It's, it's expensive, but thank God for having a pool. So we can use that pool for baptism of the Holy Spirit or baptism of water. So if you want to be baptized, I have a pool. Okay. But anyway, this is a story about the pool wherein what's called the, the pool of Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda is so uh, well known because when the Israelite people will bring their offerings, when the lamb, they be bring the lamb, they're going to go to this pool to wash those lamb and also wash themselves. Because that pool of Bethesda is, is very adjacent to the temple. So that's what's it's well known, but throughout the years, that place has become the hiding place of sick people. Sick people comes there, and the Bible says multitude of people stayed near the pool. He has five porches. Okay, it's so a really big pool. When the Bible says multitude, we're talking about a thousand people or more. Not, we're not talking about ten people, but these are multitude of all sick people. For those people who raise their hand, you're part of that crowd. So you were there, and the reason why you're there because you want to be healed. It is believed in, in, in uh, chapter 5, verse 4, it was believed that there is an angel who comes wherein he stirred up the water. When he stirred up the water, the first person who goes to the pool will be healed. And they see that. It's a belief. They, they said some of them, obviously, superstitious, but some of them believe, believe it. But throughout the years, People are packing because they're seeing the miracles. So this man, 30 years of being paralyzed, is there. Waiting. Waiting to be healed. Anybody here waiting for God? To be set free? You're going to have an encounter next week. I encourage you, maybe this is the, that, that encounter that you need to go. Maybe that's the pull. That God is stirring up. The, the movement of God where it, God is moved. You know, God loves event. God is a love event. Sometimes we, oh, no, no, no event. No, event is so important in the, in the heart of God. And sometimes in that event, there is, that's why you know the season of God. You should know the season where God is speaking. When you know the season, you can hear the season, you discern the season, you obey. Because, you know, that's why I love the Isaacar tribe in the Bible where they can hear the season and sense the season. Okay? So what happened is that, so they're all crumbling there and we're going to read it. So, there, so Jesus is coming. So we're going to go straight on John. Next verse, next PowerPoint. We're going to talk about three powerful statements which I relayed that last week. But the three powerful statements, these are conversations that happen in this chapter 5. Okay? So the first one is in the first statement is Jesus saw this man. So he's walking and he saw a multitude of people, but there is a person that he saw. He saw you. Throughout the multitude, he saw you. Been waiting to be healed, and but that's the very time, the right season, the right moment. You probably hear this is your very first time. This is where God is going to meet you. Maybe the next EGR, that's going to be your season when God will meet you face to face. So what happened is that Jesus saw this man. He knew that the man has been ill like this for a long, long time. I want to tell you, God is not unaware of your problem. He knows for the first symptoms that you have it. When you go to the doctor, you, he even knew what's the diagnosis before the doctor. He knows every bit of your problem. He knows it. He's your great position. You think the Lord forgotten you? You think the Lord has gotten? No, the Lord knows you. He knows your address. He knows everything about you. He knows your future. He knows everything about you. He knows the very heart. We know the other, we don't even know our, our hearts, but the Lord knows your heart. So I like this verse that yeah, for a long time, then he, he asked the man, thousands of people, 
and you're singled out. Oh my God, who wants to be singled out for among the month? I want that, isn't it? He was singled out because there's a right season and a right moment. And he asked, do you want to get well? Sometimes you've been there for the longest time. Sometimes you're accustomed of being sick. And sometimes you're being crippled and become your lifestyle. And sometimes you don't know what you, re if you really want to be healed. Because you've been there in that lifestyle for the longest time. And God wants to get out you from the lifestyle. But he's asking you, are you ready? Are you ready to be changed? Are you ready to remove all those things that you've been doing before? Do you want to get well? Let's personalize it. Bobby, do you, not, do you want to be get, do you want to get well in your pain? I want, Lord, I want. But I need, I need to check what I'm eating, am I right? I, uh, sometimes we, we disvalue faith and then what the right living. Like, you know, you have a lot of knee pain because you have 500 pounds. No amount of prayer unless you go to, the, you know, lose your weight. Because it's so important because physical and, natural and, and spiritual goes hand to hand. It goes hand to hand. It's God's way. That's why you need to do the natural sometimes. And God's authored that. It doesn't mean that you are less spiritual doing the natural. So, so, so second statement, okay, so he asking the, the 38 years of being paralyzed, and then this is the answer. And the answer is so different. If I'm going to, the Lord answer, <laughs> ask me that. <laughs> of course I will say, I want to be getting ill. I want to be getting <laughs> It's me. It's me. <laughs> no, no. He said, and the man, the sick man said, sir, I do not have anyone who will help me. I need somebody who will put me into the pool. When the water starts to move, I try to get in, but someone else always gets before me. That's, that's the reality. Imagine if you've been 38 in the floor, 38 years, and somebody just, I don't know if somebody bring him there, or it's been there, or just crawling there. He needs help. It's just like, you know somebody attached to you that really need help. Am I right? Anybody? Just you know, you have 500 friends in your Instagram or followers and everything. But you know when you know there's somebody that's really hurting. And they need help. They need to be moved and bring to the water. This EGR is so important. We will not change people. We will not transform them. We will not heal them. Yeah, but the Bible said be healed. But the Lord who's the one who's going to heal them, who's going to transform them. What is our role is that let's bring them to the water, the living water. And he does the changing. You know, Marlene, did not try, the church didn't try to ah, do this, this. We just brought, she was brought to the kingdom. And, and sometimes... One EGR is not enough. Sometimes we just rely on one encounter. Sometimes God wants to encounter you every single time. It takes second encounter for her to really have freedom and to obey. Maybe for me, I've been in an encounter for 44, uh, 44 years. 44 times, uh, 43 times. Maybe this 44 encounter is my healing. But the completeness of my limb. But I will not stop. I'm going to encounter the Lord. The thing is like, it's so important. Do, do not give one God one dose only. Being drunk, I've never been drunk, okay, to tell you. Yes, I've never been drunk. Anybody been drunk here? Come on, just be real. <laughs> Dr. Latrice, I don't know you drink before. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> yeah, come on, who's been drunk here before? Oh, my God. I don't know you drunk before. <laughs> so, 
So I've never been drunk because I, when I try to drink something, I, I, I just, just a little red, like, they can see my, my uh, not, not the uterus, uh, the uvula. It's like, so I, I told you, one time we went to cruise, in a cruise, and I said, Give, there's a batch where in you pay extra so that whatever liquor or whatever drinks you want, margarita and everything, said, I pay extra. Just little a drop of alcohol. <laughs> so, for you drunkards, <laughs> sometimes, huh? Huh? Former, former, former amen. If you're still doing it, you better check. We'll pray later, okay? It's okay. There's no condemnation, okay? I love you, okay? EGR. That's why we have EGR. Oh, I love EGR. But anyway, for you to be drunk, you got to need to have several doses, amen? You need to have to experience God every single time. That's why when we go to church, it's that ordinary that my heart just be normal. I'm excited every time I go to church because something good is going to happen. Because the Holy Ghost is there. When the Holy Ghost is in the house, who can imagine that we will going to do a parade? Where in the church you going to find a parade? Never. A river of life, isn't it? But there's something happened to our self-freedom. And I mean, notice something happened in our worship. It, it transcends us to something so good. I'd rather be coming to a church who love the Spirit of God, who love the presence of God, who are undignified. That's, I'm a pastor and doing a flag leading that. That's kind of, for me, like, oh. But you know, I don't care. I care what God wants. This is church. Amen. So what I'm telling you is that, when you go to church, when you go to a small group, when you go to the EGR, something good will take place. Because the Holy Spirit is in the house. The God of the universe is in the house. Jesus in the house. The great I am is in the house. The great I am, the one who you want to need for, he is there. If you need healing, he is Jehovah Rabba. He, if you're depressed, he is your joy. If you're addicted or you are having problems, he is your deliverer. Come on, are you ready to receive for more? Okay. Second statement. So we're done with the second statement. Let's go to the third statement. Do you like the third statement? Okay. That's going to be the introduction. Can we go to the third statement? Oh my gosh. All right. Third statement, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to title this, word, or this, this message, The Power of Words. That's why I'm so glad the young, uh, young people are with us. Can I hear the young people? Are you really young people? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can I hear the young people in the house? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. The power of the word. I want to use, uh, not only young people, for you old people too like me. This is going to change your life. This is going to change. This principle, if you're going to use it, it will change the trajectory of your life. It will really change you because this is something that God wants to speak to you. And there's so much in the Bible has a principles upon principles. The power of the word. The first one is this. First principle, I'm going to have only two. Yay, two. Say two. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the first principle is God created everything through his word. God created everything. Whatever you see, he created through his word. In Genesis, what is Genesis? The first book, isn't it? The first book. In Genesis chapter 1, there's nine times that the Lord said, the word said, God said. He didn't say, someone said it. It's God said and it come to existence. Nine times. He created the world through his word. He created the world through his word. The Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, come and help me out. It's the world. 
word, and the word was with God, and the, the word is God. So what happened is it's the word. So everything, and the, and the Bible says in Genesis, let there be light. And there was light. I wish I can read Genesis here. Somebody open Genesis for me, babe. And so we can, uh, let me go on on this topic. So the first thing is that the power of the words. He God created everything through his word. His words are valuable. His words with authority. When he decree, something happened. That's your God. He can accomplish something. But I want to tell you something. You ready for this? Come on. Your God created everything through his word. But let me tell you something. In Genesis 1, 26 said, let us make man into, his, into our image and likeness. I'm glad Genesis, Genesis 1, 26 that. Am I right? I'm glad they put Genesis 1, 26. Because Genesis 1, 26 saying, I am his. And I execute whoever who is. As I am, so has he. The DNA of you, Simon, when you say something will happen. When you say something, when you declare something, something will happen. Because you are God's children. Nobody's excited. When you say something, something will take place because there's power in every word that you say because you are a child of God and you are like our Father. Because God created you to His image and likeness. And the other part thing is that here, there is that and he, and, and so He created man and, and and to his image and likeness that we can use power. And he said, govern. Subdue. You know what? how do we subdue the earth? Through the words of our mouth. How do we rule? It's we subdue. subdue. We rule through our mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If you learn this, it's going to change your life. So, Pastor Bob, so whenever I, whatever I say, it will happen. Yes, according to your faith and according to the will of God. It needs to be according to the will of the Lord. But that's the DNA of your dad. Okay? Now, in Hebrew 11, 3 said, by faith, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The words are framed by the word of God. In Romans 4, 17, which I like so much. He said there, Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. This is God is talking to Abraham. Okay, this is God talking to Abraham, and he said, I'm so glad that God talks, am I right? I don't want to just, Abraham, I have made you father. I want God to talk to me personally. If you have the spirit of God, God can talk to you and you can hear him. Okay, as it's written, I have made you father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead, God is the one who brings life, uh, uh, life from the dead and calls those things. And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. From nothing to something through his word. That's your DNA. That's your calling. That's the reason why in the planet earth. The reason you're in the planet earth to declare 
the word of God, to declare the kingdom of God to your mouth. So when I got saved and I learned this principle, I've been learning this principle when I was 13 years old. My mom told me, there's power whatever you say. And I took that into heart. All of us, five children, took that in our hearts. And really, we, we evaluate everything that we say. Because that's the scripture. The problem is we've been talking so carelessly. We're talking dumb stuff. We're talking about cursing. We're talking about all these vile things. That's what's happening in your life. If you're going to say, I'm going to be stupid, you're going to be stupid. That's not even biblical, but that's in the, in, in the, in the, in the science. It, it programs your brain right away. What you hear, you become. You know, I, when my mom was not born again yet, I, uh, I was really abused in every form. Physical abuse, uh, verbal abuse, all this thing abuse. It's like, oh my gosh. So... Before I met the Lord, I was so wrecked and really rejected and really want to uh, quit my life. That's because of the words they, my mom and other people telling me that I am not tantamount to anything. That I am the stupid among the five. I am the cutest among the five. <laughs> I just made it up, okay? Calling those things which are not as though they were, okay? <laughs> so that's my life. Thank God for the word of God. Thank God that I have a new operating system. I have new operating system. I, am not, I'm not, I don't have the, 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 the old one. I have the new one. The latest one. Updated, upgraded, and paid by God. Yeah. See, our iPhone needs to change every time. Isn't it? You need to upgrade it. We're going to get it slow. Some of us were so slow, slow like a turtle, so slow because we don't update our spirit. God wants to update your spirit when you go to encounter. That's why encounter is so powerful. It's like being drunk in the spirit of the Lord. If you don't plan to come this encounter, please do. If you've been in encounter for five times, have another six times. Sign up. Three days of having a date with God. Who want to have a date with the Lord? The God of the universe will have a date to you. Oh my gosh. Everything I ask, he will do it. Amen. Because he loves us. Okay. Next, next will be principle number two. Yeah, we're done almost done. Principle number two. Principle number two, we shape our future on what we say. You want to shape your future? Declare what God is saying about you and what the word of God is saying about you. You know, my children, my two beautiful children, we shape their future by what we say. Together with my aunts and everything, when they're in the, in the Carmel's womb, we've declared that they will love the presence of the Lord so much. That they will be lovers and crazy lovers of the presence of God. We have a, a, a walk, walkman with the headphone. We put it in Carmel's belly so that they can hear the worship songs. We prepare. We want to shape it because we believe there's power in every word we say. Then when we declare it, we declare it, we declare it and see what the Lord has done. They love the presence. My two children love radical lovers of the presence of Jesus. Not because I'm cute. Because I shape their future by the word of my testimony where I speak it. If you have children, begin to speak life. And I was so convicted lately. Because when they're, when they're kids, we speak a lot of truths. We declare and declare. And then what I'm studying is... Did you stop speaking the way you speak when they were kids? And I was so, I, I told my wife, I think we need to repent. Because we stopped speaking the way more. You thought 
that your child is 18 years old, you're done. Man, no. The more you need to speak life to their life. We speak life. We shape our future, what we say. I remember I was working as a manager, nurse manager in a one long-term care, acute long-term facility, and, and I heard about working to the Veterans Affairs. It's so good, okay? And to get in, it's really hard to get in. So I saw a clinic in Hackberry. There's a clinic there. I didn't even know um, that, that that's a, the full story about, but there's, I heard about that clinic. So what I did, because I know the principle of the word, I began to come to their parking lot, and I said, I decree and I declare that one day I will work in this place. And my family will work in this place. I declare that every time I have time to go. And sometimes my wife said, oh, are you crazy? No, she believes in me. But I think she, because I want, because there's power on what I say. After two years, I get into the VA. <laughs> After that... Marion get to the VA. <laughs> then my wife get to the VA. Oh, Carmel went to the VA. Because what? We shape our future what we say. What are you been saying for your future? What are you declaring in your future? What are you declaring about this church, about this uh, America? There's power in your word. Are you getting something here? Are you, is it encouraging or no? Or oh, you want me to stop? Okay, good. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. In, in Proverbs 18.21, okay, Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. You need to thank God for your tongue. Say it. Lord, thank you for my tongue. Come on. You never thank God for my tongue. You've been 50 years old, you never thank God, isn't it? Come on. Thank God for your tongue. Yes. yes. Why? I don't know. I was, in, the, uh, I was in, in a prayer meeting and the Lord just downloading a lot of stuff. You know, sometimes the Lord download my sermon. He downloaded this sermon three weeks ago with me about the power of the tongue. And then, like, imagine how in the world you can produce sound. Only human being produces this distinct sound because of your tongue, where the base of your tongue is for your vocal cords. And all of the, you know, the diaphragm, all your breathing, all your lungs, helping everything to produce sound. And what God is saying about that sound, about that voice, it can change and create and produce life. There's some frequency that's happening in your voice. And so funny, we have how many billions in this world? That GPT, can you put it? How many? Seven mil billion? Those seven billion, they have no, we have a distinct sound. Everyone has a distinct sound. That's the power of God. Amen? You have customized sound. Colleen, your sound is different than Carmel. Billions of people, who does that? God. I appreciate my voice. I appreciate my sound. Because when I speak, something will happen. That's why prayer is so powerful. There's no such thing as like prayer like this. You say it. You declare it to the atmosphere. But when you declare it to the atmosphere, the Lord hears it. That's why you don't pray. Mm, no, that's not prayer. You release it. Okay. Proverbs 18, 21. Dead and light the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Let me ask you. What are you seeing? Is it life that's coming out? Or is it death? 
I think we need to be corrected. Cursing, cursing, I'm going to be like this. I'm going to be victim. I'm going to be hurting and all that. And nothing's going to happen well. I, don't, I have no job. I'm in pain. I have all these things. It's going to happen. Because there's power in your words. It's create. Remember your DNA? And also, let me tell you. The Lord hears. The devil hears you too. The angels hear it. And the angels are ministering angels who are in the execute. Whatever you say. The devil also are demonic angels who are in the execute. When you say negative stuff. When you curse. When you gossip. When you slander people. When you, this is really biggie, young people. Even me. Criticizing people. Make, make. It's like funny stuff. Look at, look at his face. Look at his feet. You know, just those are things. And do you know when you say that? The devil doesn't have any power. What it comes to have a power because of what you said. He leverage on what you say. So when you say negative, that's he captured it and manifest it. If you don't say any negative, you always say positive things. The word of God, the devil is, ups, you know, he's going to leave. So what are you saying? Are you learning something? Our words carry weights. They can build or tear down. Heal or hurt. Give life or death. There's a significance when we speak life, amen, the authority of the word, the authority of your voice, the author authority of what you say. Young people, start speaking good things about your future. Learn the word of God. Speak it. Uh, you know, I remember when, I'm the, um, I declare, when I was single, serving the Lord with Pastor Alan. We're 18 years old, good-looking kids, you know, serving the Lord. And, of course, we want the best for our life. Am I right? So we already declared, Lord, I want this, I want this, I want to declare all this. I love the Lord, so all these things. And, and, boy, I went to Texas and find my lovely Carmel who has all the plus and everything. But you know what? I, before I proposed to her, I made a declaration. I cannot find the declaration. I made a declaration of what we're going to happen in our life. It's like a little declaration. That, because I, I, I value the power of words. So I've declared. And every, every time, we, I don't know, we're so corny. Every, every month we celebrate our, what do you call that? Every month we celebrate it? Monster. Monster, it? <laughs> Who celebrate Monster here? No, don't be. You're not cringy. You're, you're, come on. <laughs> you? Okay. So, Mansuri, like, you know, I, I, when we celebrate, we all, I always declare that. Remember that, babe, that the blue that we created? And I, I, everything that I declare is happening. Power in a word. Amen? In Revelation 12, 11, they triumph over the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to think from death. I'm going to be closing pretty soon. In Numbers 14, 28, it said here, in Numbers 14, this is where the conversation of God and, and Moses. If you have time, please check this out. Chapter 14, it's really powerful. Like, God is it's up to here with the complaint of the Israelite. All the complaint, all the negativity, the gossip, and all these things. It's like ah, negative. Everywhere, so negative. And he said, I'm ready to remove them. I'm ready not to bring them to the promised land. Of course, there's Moses. He said... Don't do this. You remove them from Egypt and then let them not come into the promised land. 
And he said this, be compassionate, be gracious, be kind-hearted. That's the heart speaking of Moses speaking. He's not, thinking, he's not just think, saying that in the mind. He's speaking it. And this is what the Lord said with that conversation. Now tell them this. This is God saying. Now tell them this to the people. As surely as I live. That's really funny because the Lord never dies. <laughs> when I read this, I go, oh my God, you're funny, Lord. I said, as surely as I live, declares the Lord. I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Everything you say to the atmosphere, God the Father hears it. He hears your cry. Say it. Declare it. That's why, thank you, the heart of this man who spoke and and millions of people, you know, get able to get into the promised land. The generation that's our complainer, they did not able to get in. And he said, but there's only two people who get into the promised land on that generation. That's Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb. The Bible says, Caleb who has a different spirit. Who has different, because they're the only... How many spies is that, Dr. Latrice? How many? 10 or 12? 12 spies. Only two get the rep good report. God loves to hear good things to your mouth. Is it good? Do you, I want you to dream again. I want you to speak again fruitfully to your family, to your children, to your future, whatever's going to happen. You speak it, declare it. Remember, it's our words frame our future. And also, we have a DNA of our Father who creates things in what we say. <laughs> he create, we create things through our mouth. Amen? We create things through our mouth. So when go, we go to... Ephesians 4.29 said, this is so powerful. Let no corrupt words, the other translation, communication, proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary identification, that is may impart grace to the hearer. This is like a slap in my mouth. Because sometimes we are so loose in our mouth. Loose in our tongue. The, the, the mouth, the tongue that we use in praising God is the same mouth that we use to, to hurt somebody. You're going to need to repent. And God want a heart, heart. You want to see the supernatural? You want to see the, the movement of God, the water being uh, moved? Change what you say. In conclusion... Before that, the third statement is so powerful. Said he said the, um, uh, when he talked to the crippled man. Remember the first in encounter? He was on the floor, and he said, "Rise up, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk." Did he waited before he get healed before doing that? Did he waited? Oh, uh, let me be get healed first. Before I'll walk. Sometimes we need the answered prayer before we move. Then that's not faith anymore. You're asking for assurance. But the assurance that God is saying, walk by faith. If I am, that's going to be hard. If I'm lying down and I'm not healed yet, I'm, I'm here crawling and then you ask me to wake to stand up I am not yet healed I am still tried it I have all this but what the master says is so powerful when Jesus said it 
he meant it. When he meant it, this power will be released. He said to me, rise up. So I just obey and rise up. And then healing comes. Don't wait for permission to come before you obey God. Don't wait to thank God until you have your healing. Without healing, you thank God. Without healing, and that's really confusion to the devil's mind. It's like, why are you thanking God? You're still sick. You don't know how the, the kingdom operates. The, the kingdom operates by faith. See, sometimes, remember, when they need to feed the 5,000 or more, they, did, they didn't just, okay, let me bless this. How many fish? How many fish? Help me out. Two fish and five bread. Five loaves of bread. Okay. So I always uh, interchange that. But anyway, he didn't say, okay, blah, blah, 5,000 uh, basket. He did not do that, Jesus. He said, he thanked to the Father. God, thank you that you will do all these miracles and everything. I trust you. And they start giving the little fish and little bread to the disciple. And God said, Jesus said, give that, give that away. Serve people. While they're serving it, multiplication comes. So I want to tell you, sometimes your prayer is not yet answered because you are lack of faith. You're going to need to move. Pass. Don't wait until healing comes. Act on it. Like right now, I don't have pain at all by faith. I, you know, I, I, this will not keep me from praising the Lord. This faith will not keep me on, on advancing that kingdom. I'm going to be violent in my worship before the Lord. Oh. And I will thank Him. Every time I, 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 there's one pain coming, thank you Lord for my healing. That confused the enemy. Are you, are you blessed? It does encourage you. In conclusion, for real. For real. This is the last slide. Conclusion. Let's go back to John chapter 5, 14. And 15. I love John chapter 5. Mm, it's just one of my favorite. Okay. So, so what happened? He got healed. So went out. Okay. This is what happened. The religious people were upset why it was happening on Sabbath. See, sometimes God do unconventional things beyond your reasoning. Beyond your reasoning. God can do impossible things beyond your reasoning. And what happened is that, and he's asking, um, who heals you? And he said, just a man healed me. He didn't know the, the Lord yet. But you know what? After verse 14, afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple. He got healed. If I got healed for 30 years, I will go to my family in the Philippines. I'm going to call on my every amiga and amigo I have. And we're going to go chit-chatting and everything. He did not do that. He went to the temple where the presence of God. He want more encounter. Woo! He want more. He, he's the satisfied of that healing. He want more. He want to know Jesus. He want to know the person of Jesus. The temple speaks the presence of God. Who loves the presence of God here? I want to be lovers of the presence of God. I want more. I want more of Him. I love Him so much. That's why every encounter, next encounter, next week, sign up. Sign up. You don't know what to do. Clear your schedule for your date with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Clear your schedule. For $35, you have encountered the Lord and your future is secured. Come, come. Let's just enjoy. And if you're not a worker, be a worker. Come on, let's just be a body. This coming encounter, this coming weekend. Really, God, whatever you want to do for River of Life, we are ready for your move. And then this is the Another encounter of Jesus. I just love when Jesus encounter. See? Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, another talking again. He has another another one-to-one -one with him. Yes, he loved to have one-to-one. -one. And he said, See, you have been made well. 
he kept his healing and seen no more not only physical body even the heart issue even addiction God is a God who want to save the totality of who you are see no more lest worse things come upon you you want to keep your healing your freedom and total set free come to the presence of God come to the temple come to the church don't leave the church church is not perfect because I'm here and Dr. Lutris is here and Bear is here it's not perfect but we have a perfect God that we serve the man departed that's, this is the last verse I'm going to read the man departed and told the Jews not only Jew Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well my gosh he didn't only the man he said now Jesus with a personal conviction in his heart made him well personal relationship not only that he served he began to open up his mouth about the good news throughout this encounter God was going to use you going to change you he's going to use your mouth for greater things amen let's all stand up thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord why our heads bow down I'm going to ask a very powerful question and everybody needs to answer this in their heart. If you die today, do you know and you know that you're going to heaven? If you are not sure, I don't know, Pastor Ba, I want to be real to you. You've been so real throughout your sermon. But I don't really know if I will go to heaven. And I'm very away from him. If you're that person, say, God, uh, Bob, Pastor Bob, I really want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior of my heart. That I want to leave this place having a relationship with Him. Just raise your hand and say, I want to. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you for your heart. Thank you for your heart saying yes to Him. You want to accept Christ in your heart. Everybody bow your heads. We will pray this prayer together. From your heart, okay? From your heart. You say, Lord Jesus, I hear the good news that you love me so much. That you die on the cross for me. And you're so good. At this moment, forgive me. Forgive all of my sins. All of my iniquities. I ask you, to come to my heart be the Lord of my heart be my Savior my best friend change me by your blood I confess in my mouth that Jesus Christ He is Lord and Savior of my life I surrender my life to you my Jesus my lover of my heart in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer and you believe in your heart, God entered to your heart. Remember, God comes only by invitation. He will not force you. But when you raise your hand, you're saying, God, I surrender everything. Now, if you made that decision today, we have a, a, a table over there. Hey, I made a decision to follow the Lord. I made Christ in my heart. We have some people down there to speak about, you know, the... Uh, what you receive and what you make a decision. Lastly, I'm going to open the altar. If this message really resonates with you, like, oh my God, ah, this is for me. I want you to come up front. Come up front. If this message, like, we're going to end this, like, oh my God, this really touched my heart. Come. We're going to ask the Lord to do something. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your obedience.
Can I have the prayer team to come and begin to release? You know, just pray the revelation of God for these people. Come. Am I gonna? I gonna just open this altar. If you need a touch from God, if you need healing your bodies, come. And I'm gonna ask the the pastors to start praying for people. We have some oil here. I'm gonna dismiss the crowd. Lord, we just thank you what you have done today. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you we created under your image. We declare that our our week will be blessed. We thank you, Lord God, that everything do well, that you will keep us and bless us, protect us. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. For those people who are here.